Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition stop stories. The National Emergency Response Plan will be tested Thursday with a major tsunami simulation exercise. St. Lucian students get a bird's eye view of career choices in the aviation industry. One of the island's most prolific writers turns a page for Independence 40. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Aquarium. St. Lucia will join other countries in the Caribbean and Latin America as a participant in a regional tsunami response exercise on Thursday, March 14, 2019, dubbed Carib Wave 19. The exercise presents a perfect opportunity for testing and to improve our state of readiness and to evaluate local tsunami response plans, increase tsunami awareness and preparedness, and improve response coordination throughout the Caribbean and adjacent regions. Janelle Norville has details of the simulation. The purpose of the exercise is to improve the tsunami warning system's effectiveness along the coasts of the Caribbean and adjacent regions. The exercise provides an opportunity for the corresponding emergency management organizations to exercise their operational lines of communications, review their tsunami response procedures, and promote tsunami preparedness. National Emergency Management Organization NEMO's Program Development Officer, Andrew George, highlights the importance of the drill. What is happening is that the, and the exercise is also simulating uh, the, an earthquake followed by uh, the volcanic eruption of the Kikemjani volcano of Grenada. That underwater volcano also has it been erupting quite often in the past few years. And between this burst of earthquakes around the islands, and the heightened activity of Kikem Jenny, we, in the, we as the emergency management offices in the Caribbean uh, have to take a closer look at what is happening to ensure that there is as much exercising of, as possible of our systems and our protocols to ensure that any operational strength or weakness is identified early. And the, the exercise is going to look at what happens if there is an underwater volcano of eruption of Grenada which creates a tsunami which is going to arrive in Castries in 22 minutes, which leaves us with only 22 minutes to basically evacuate the entire Castries Basin, where we have literally thousands of persons on a daily basis who live and work near the ocean. The first phase of the simulation will see the evacuation of several primary and infant schools in the Castries Basin. The second phase will be the testing of the country's early warning systems, namely automated sirens in Castries and Canaries, radio broadcast interrupt capability, and provision of early warnings through a mobile phone application. The third phase will be done in Canaries, where two schools, interested businesses and residents will be evacuated to predetermined evacuation and or assembly points. George indicates that NEMO will be collaborating with the Department of Education and Innovation to initiate the full-scale evacuation drill involving several schools in the chosen area. Caribwave is giving us that opportunity to test all our systems and we're going to be testing it in three components. The first component is the Castries Basin and evacuating eight schools in Castries. Uh, this is from the RC, Infant and Primary, Anglican, the Ave Maria, Camille Henry and some of those. So those schools we, have, we felt um, we need to look at some of the issues because they are closer to the water. The second component is to test a community, a coastal community. We've chosen canneries as that coastal community too because Canaries is located, located in a valley which allows the tsunami to run, the run of some tsunamis in those valleys will be even higher. So we've looked at Canaries as a, the place to, to, to try this year. Uh, we should evacuate two of the, the infant and primary and the preschool. And the third component is where we're going to be testing our early warning systems. We have installed multi-hazard early warning systems in Canaries, Castries, Denry, and uh, Viewfort. So we're going to test the ones in Castries, which is the, the, the siren. Nemo indicates that the regular exercising of response plans is critical to maintain readiness for an emergency. This is particularly true for the Caribbean and adjacent regions where tsunamis are infrequent but can be of very high impact. The exercise will take place on the 14th of March 2019 at 2 o'clock under the scenario that a 6.0 magnitude earthquake associated with an underwater volcanic eruption and subsequent collapse of an unstable sector of Kikem Jenny that generates a tsunami. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville.
A recognition and prize-giving ceremony for those who made the inaugural Independence Parade a success was held on Monday. Here's Anicia Antoine. St. Lucia celebrated its 40th independence anniversary in grand style under the theme, All In, Our Journey, Our Future. Several activities were held to commemorate the milestone including an independence parade, the St. Lucian Story production and the Mr. and Mrs. Independence competitions. St. Lucian artists also got a chance to showcase their talent through a song competition. The Independence Committee hosted a prize-giving ceremony to award participants of the various competitions. Sonia Sifley, member of the Independence Committee, expressed her satisfaction with the level of participation and the quality produced. From all indications, everyone was pleased with it. I really want to thank all the participants who we know it was something, something new when the idea was pitched at you to take part in it. And for those who readily took part, I really want to thank you. Those who had some questions to ask, again, we want to thank you. By the time we got started looking at um, videos and seeing the videos, we were, to say we were pleased with the, the quality of the songs is really an understatement. It really showed that St. Lucians rose to the, the occasion of All In and really embraced All In. Amongst the emerging winners were the Silver Shadow Performing Arts Academy with the titles of Most Impressive Contingent and Most Innovative Design, the Helen Folk Dancers for the Best Interpretation of the Independence Theme, and Minel Delis, first place winner of the song competition. Suzette Merrill, assistant producer of the Independence Parade, expressed gratitude to the people of St. Lucia on behalf of Adrian Auger, the producer of the St. Lucian Story and the Independence Parade. Um, it has been a singular honor and a unique privilege to have been invited to produce two signature events to mark the 40th anniversary of our country's independence, despite the roller coaster ride. We remain thankful for those who considered as worthy of this mission and trust that we have not fallen short of the expectations. The Independence Prize Given Ceremony took place at the GIS Studios on Monday, 11th of March, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. St. Lucia is among the islands chosen by International Air Rally, an aviation organization, for one of its major activities for the year, with the hope that students would gravitate towards the aviation industry, Lisa Joseph explains. The curious minds of St. Lucia's students were captured by the fascinating world of aviation as professionals associated with the International Air Rally descended on the island as part of its Caribbean Air Rally 2019. The International Air Rally each year organizes travel events for members. They engage in activities that not only explore the authentic beauty and essence of the destinations, but allow members to immerse in local cultures. It is against that backdrop that the Caribbean Air Rally took flight in 2010. This year's event is being held March 4 to the 15. On Sunday, March 10, local aviation and tourism officials welcomed the International Air Contingent. For St. Lucia, the arrival was significant, given the educational component attached to the International Air Rally via its charity wing, Aviation Connection. The organization runs an aeronautical training program for high school students that began in Quebec, Canada, with the expressed intent of steering the youth towards careers in aviation to avoid a crash of the industry. Catherine Tobinas is the managing director. We have a serious lack of pilots and aviation uh, specialists, and this is so dangerous because countries cannot survive without aviation. I heard a lot of pilots actually going to fly in Dubai and Arabic countries because they're getting a lot of money there. But what are we going to do when we don't have pilots, right? So there's going to be a big challenge. The Senusha Tourism Authority, SLTA, was instrumental in facilitating the local leg of the Caribbean Air Rally. Acting Chief Executive Officer Tiffany Howard says doing so went above and beyond the mandate of promoting St. Lucia as a destination. And as I look out on these young faces from our schools and realize that amongst us are tomorrow's aviators. 
And with one word of encouragement from many of you, they can begin to dream of a world where they too are the captains flying the friendly skies. So we want to inspire them, coach them, encourage them, and be a part of helping them to make history as well, while teaching them the importance of safety and preparedness. Chief Civil Aviation Officer in the Department of Economic Affairs, Transport and Civil Aviation, Eustace Sherry, says the air rally covers three pillars, namely tourism, air transportation, and education. Sherry underscored the importance of the appreciation for aviation the event develops among students. Well, whether it be being a pilot or air traffic controller, aircraft mechanic, airport management, meteorology, and the list goes on. There are so many areas in aviation that these kids can actually venture into. And I am sure that at some point after interacting with pilots and then again with the ministry, they'll be able to, to be able to make decisions in terms of the career development. Teacher at St. Mary's College, Shona Ephraim, echoed the sentiment, adding that the air rally brings to life concepts simply taught in the classroom. Concepts such as altitude, Coriolis effect, updraft, currents, air passes, etc. And to expose them to an authentic experience with persons who experience it on a day-to-day -day basis. The wealth of knowledge that you will expose our students to is far beyond what we can expose them within the classroom. The students spend valuable time interacting with the visiting aviators. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly coming up, the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. Hypertension is a deadly disease that is common in St. Lucia. We depend on blood pressure monitors to determine if our blood pressure is too high or too low. Should a reading on these measuring devices be incorrect, we are literally putting our lives at risk. Doctors, caregivers and patients, get your blood pressure meters verified by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards to ensure the accuracy of measuring devices. Look for the green pass sticker on the blood pressure meter at your next visit to the doctor. The correct reading can mean the difference between life and death. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello once again. Ryan O'Brien with news from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will be launching the Youth Mentorship Program at the Coconut Bay Resort and Spa on Friday, March 15, 2019 from 10 o'clock to 12.30 p.m. The Mentorship Program is being funded by the National Lotteries Authority to the tune of $100,000 and target secondary schools in Miku, Viafor and Chozelle. The purpose is to outline a youth mentoring program as a key approach to promote positive growth such as character development, improve mental health and self-esteem, improve academic achievement and to prevent engagement in at-risk behavior, substance abuse, problematic behavior among youth in St. Lucia. This project is designed to be conducted at the community level, engaging adult mentors from various backgrounds including community leaders, professionals, clergy, educators, police officers, and other community volunteers. The program will be implemented in two phases across 11 districts across the island. Still in matters related to youth development, Director of Youth Mary Wilfred feels the recent report on adolescents in St. Lucia will influence future policies and programs for youth and adolescents in St. Lucia. This report really gives us a, a very um, good perspective of, of, of what is needed to address some of the issues in education, in employment, um, in youth and sexual health, um, uh, issues of uh, physical um, violence against young people. And so when we make our, uh, when we present our proposals, we can come um, with the authority 
of the report and uh, hopefully convince the Ministry of Finance and the uh, Department of, of, of Budget that based on, on, on what we found, based on the findings of the report, that we would need um, X amount of resources to address um, this issue that, is, uh, that concerns young people in St. Lucia. Track and field into crunch time. Interschools technical meeting set for Wednesday, March 13th at the Ministry's conference room. Southern Qualifier, March 18th and 19th at the George Audlam Stadium. Northern Qualifier, March 21st and 22nd the Darren Sami Cricket Ground. Inter-district primary technical meeting, March 26, 2019 at the Ministry's conference room. The inter-school semifinals and finals set for March 27th and 29th and the Inter-District Primary Athletics Championships, April 3rd, 2019. That's our update from the Ministry of Development and Sports today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. St. Lucian writer John Robert Lee is making his contribution to the island's 40th independence anniversary. His most recent publication, St. Lucian Writers and Writing, is a bibliography, a list of published works of St. Lucian writers, including poetry, prose, fiction, non-fiction, and short stories. The book is published by Papillot Press, based in London and Dominica. What I went for was to make it just an index of published works up to 2018 and 2019. I included a listing of background reading for people who want to know who inspired, what inspires St. Lucian writers. So that is there. Plus, it's a nice handy size to put in your bag as a student. You stick this in your, your purse, your bag, and you, you're good to go. So it can be arduous because bibliography, you have to go to libraries and bookshops, search the net for books by St. Lucians about St. Lucia, make a listing of that and type it all up and edit it. It can be, but it's a, it's a necessary task for us. We need to have like a directory, a listing of the accomplishments, the works of our, of our people. In this case, it's works of, of writers. Lee says the book can be considered a research tool for students and researchers, but can also be used to discover the cultural history of St. Lucia. There are many people outside of St. Lucia, and because of Derek Walker, are interested in St. Lucian writers, like Kendall Hippolyte, myself, and so on. And so they will find this interesting. I hope the writers will, in fact, take a look at it so they can know, especially the younger writers, um, what's the tradition they're fitting into, who has gone before them, who are even their own contemporaries. And if they themselves have published a book, they should find their book there. So it would not be, a, in fact, first interest to writers, I would hope, St. Lucian writers. But researchers of our literature from St. Lucia, um, university students, researchers from all over the world come here to research Walcott and others. So they will find this um, very useful, very useful research tool. The book is available at 758 Books at the Gable Woods Mall and also online from Papillot Press or Amazon. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. When persons with TB sneeze or cough, healthy persons nearby breathe in the droplets and the bacteria can lodge in their lungs. People with weakened immune systems such as HIV AIDS, alcohol and drug users, smokers, children and the elderly are most susceptible. Persons with a cough should take precautions when in contact with persons in public places. Cover your mouth when sneezing and coughing. Visit your doctor or health center. You must complete your treatment. TB can be cured even with HIV. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB and HIV. Protect yourself and others. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information and Government Services, as a GIS, as a MP Television National Payer NTN, Kapositou Nouvelle en Creole. Kapositou. Primus Hutchinson, Organisation Internationale de Francophonie en Collaboration et puis Alliance Française, j'ai ouvert officiellement les activités pour observation jeunesse de la francophonie. Jeunesse à la, c'est un qui a trouvé observé tous les années, ça c'est le 20 à mois de mars, pour célébrer langage et culture de la francophonie. Observation ça là qu'a fait en tous ces 77 pays qui même organisation correspondant national pour la francophonie Marcia Symphorian, en tout ce qui c'est ici qu'a été en 
et puis le reste comme une organisation pour observation ça là c'est pour rien nous marquer qui célébration ça là important parce que c'est même là ni plusieurs principes et l'autre l'habitude qui commun entre eux même yo on a dans selon madame symphorien c'est héritage langage là qui ni fondation en français correspondant déclaré aussi qui à part des célébrations yo ka pousser publicité à sous valeur organisation francophonie par exemple la paix c'est des cultures qui ka existence à part c'est même là langage français éducation des entraînements recherche et développement des corporations et pour entretenir développement pour pas détruire les ressources naturelles non alors pour ça là j'ai j'ai organisé plusieurs activités des affaires langage et culture en parmi c'est un spectacle pour amuser peuple là en façon des amusement en diverses manières des acrobatiques et diverses performances par un mot qui bien étonné enfin un circus comme nous dit en anglais c'est département français caribla qui a organisé ce spectacle ce que ça là là aussi kaini yon dit à la français et qui ont théâtre à la français selon chef des affaires culture pour alliance française Monique Auguste expliquer qui yo kai présenté théâtre ça là hold your live pour les enfants live ça là c'est deuxième après bible pour trouver trois dit dans différents langages en la terre alliance française qui a invité public là pour assister production qui yo kai présenté l'hiver en mois de mars à l'école secondaire couvent à Saint-Esprit ça c'est Saint Joseph Convent organisation nationale pour ménagement des arts naturels ça c'est NIMO c'est une agence pour ménagement des arts à Kaoibla c'est dire te tient un atelier de entraînement pour les membres média aussi présent c'était les officiers haut bureau du West Coast pour produire nouvelle à ce temps il était là principalement pour indiquer ces membres média à ce qui met façon pour défricher ces différents termes qui qui sorti en bureau ça là ça c'est pour faire possible pour les membres média comprendre plus mais des informations ça là et pour présenter plus facilement selon officier qui est responsable pour développement programme nimo Andrew George a tiré ça c'était pour faciliter et renforcer habilité des membres média pour une capacité là pour présenter ou apporter très effectivement à son affaire business naturel George Marke qui pour ces membres média ces mêmes nouvelles qui reliable c'est faut y trouver hold source là qui véritablement connaître ça qui a fait alors les membres média ni pour trouver manière pour une cause publique là ou accepter ou apporter hold numéro et pour point proportion de protection primaire mais c'est George placé en pile importance à son même manière pour les travailleurs média présenter nouvelles et information qui reliable il veut dire pour y prendre bonne proportion comme à présent média social qu'a fourni public là et puis en pile information il pas la vérité mais c'est George conseille les travailleurs média pour toujours faire assurer que ces informations ça là qui au casimé hein qu'a sorti hot source qui reliable George annonce que ces informations à sous des as ni pour sortir premièrement hot numéro qui a passé by GIS ça c'est département d'information gouvernement qui a ni responsabilité ça là pour faire kai media pays les autres kai media avrai il marque qui malgré il pas possible pour contrôler ça media social qu'a semé dehors là il faut les membres media faire assurer qui je trouver nouvelle là hot ces sources là qui reliable cette ci qu'a trouvé conseil là pour apprécier de l'eau qui a servi en préparation pour observer journée de l'eau le 22 mars directeur exécutif pour association Koibla qui reste comme ça pour gérer management les autorités qui reste comme ça pour de l'eau monde qui a servi et aussi ça qui a sorti après vite c'est monsieur Ignace Jean conseiller public là pour porter de l'eau plus respect parce que manière il a fait présentement nous ça a été de les comme si même sans manger mais ou pas ça fait diète sans de l'eau et puis de l'eau c'est en richesse au on la terre qui ca venir plus important et puis ça yo ca percevoir en tant qui ca venir de l'eau caï de l'eau toujours important mais parce que nous ca ni moins de l'eau parce que nous ni ça fait nous ca créer um, climate change climatisation ca changer alors nous ni pour faire toute manière pour nous ça conserver de l'eau pas ni que le uh, département les forêts et eh ben wasco qui ni pour faire travail là 
Mais nous tous, parce que la manière où nous servi de l'eau caillou, qui quantité de l'eau ou qui attend de l'eau les caillou ou qui a des gens manière pour servir de l'eau, pas servir de l'eau pour laver les motos et les comme ça. Mais à part de ça, là, ni l'autre petit bagage qui a fait un caillou, comme quand ces citernes là qui a servi un caillou là, qui quantité de l'eau qui a servi pour um, um, faire nettoyer caillou et puis là où flush en toilette, c'est bagage ça là. On a gaspillé un pile d'eau et puis nous, nous pour chercher qui manière pour nous conserver de l'eau. Ces pays caribes là qui même association, c'est cette ici, c'est Versant, La Grenade, Dominique, BVI, Cayman Islands, Antigues, Montserrat, Tuxa Caicos et Babad. Et c'est comme ça nous avons trouvé une nouvelle aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie autant pour garder, je vous remercie invitation. Je ne peux pas encore les présenter une autre nouvelle à Koyol. À présent, nous avons vu pour nous. Merci en Pearl Primus. Here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Weak, unstable conditions in the lower atmosphere over the region will cause a few scattered showers, mainly over the southern portion of the Lesser Antilles, during the next 24 hours. The skies are fair, becoming cloudy at times, with a few scattered showers. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 1.47 p.m. and will be low at 8.24 p.m. The tide for Vieux-Fort Bay was high at 3.14 p.m. and will be low again at 9.31 p.m. The sea is moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Wednesday at 6.13 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.